When it comes to creative work, I have always been a Mac guy. However, don't worry, because I got my degree in computer science, so I've actually used Linux and Windows extensively as well. Because of this, I have always been jealous of just how much horsepower you could put into a PC build and pay the same amount for a Mac computer that is significantly underpowered. It's not great. So, when my cousin came to me and said he wanted my help to do his new monstrous PC build, I said yes. Of course I'll help you, under one condition. Let me install DaVinci Resolve on your new machine so I can drag race it against my new M2 Max MacBook Pro. And the results from the perspective of a professional editor, fascinating. Let's dive in. With the beast built, it was time to do our tests. As someone who uses DaVinci Resolve professionally, there was a few things that I care about and wanted to compare. I wanted to compare a simple tracking shot. I definitely wanted to compare a magic mask shot. I wanted to take one of my projects and see how playback was. I wanted to compare if voice isolation performed any different on both. And finally, I wanted to render out B-RAW footage to just do a raw render comparison with the toughest footage I could think of that I was able to get my hands on. These were the main tests I could think of of where I usually find friction with my M2 Max. And when I say friction, I just mean like places where maybe I have to render stuff or stuff just doesn't play back in real time. Now, right out of the gates, I just wanna say these tests are not uber scientific. Was it that squiggly that messed up things? Maybe. Some of them have numbers, most of them don't. But at the end of the day, I was sitting there side by side with the machine that I do work on every single day and compared it right next to on the same desk, my cousin's beast machine. I, I, I mean, this is why you're here, right? <laughs> So the first test that I wanted to try was the tracking test. Now, as someone who likes to do this a lot lately, I obviously was interested in this one. Right out of the gate, we were shocked because the difference on this one was negligible. While again, not being super scientific, from what we could tell, the M2 Max was only doing about two frames per second slower than my cousin's PC build. So naturally, we had to try some more. So for the next test, of course, I had to know, what about Magic Mask? I really wanna okay. test Magic Mask. This is something I use all of the time, and again, it chugs on my M2 Max, and I assumed it would be a great test to really push the new Beast Machine. And I was spot on. We're seeing a pretty big difference here so far. This one was a little tough to test. Some of the numbers we were seeing in Fusion were not making sense to us. It's definitely struggling, but like you said, this is a harder. But once we did a good old fashioned 3 2 1 drag race, the results became obvious pretty quickly. It's probably close to 2x, right? Probably. On your time. The 4090 crushed this. Where the first test wasn't feeling massively different to us, the 4090 did this at about two times the speed of the M2 Max for the clip that we tested. So, a big win for the 4090, but we had to test more. The next test was just loading up an old project that I had done, and I wanted to just kind of sit there right next to Kyle and see what is the difference between these two machines with a project loaded up that I had edited with background rendering turned on so I could see that in motion. And I will say, to no surprise, background rendering was flying on his machine, but sitting there being at the sticks for both, I wasn't overall that impressed or didn't feel a massive difference when playing back either timeline. So maybe that's not a massive difference. Even with the background rendering appearing to be significantly quicker. Both had real-time playback and places that needed background rendering, it still played back in pretty much real time and then by the time it was done, had it background rendered. On the 4090 build, it just showed that bar loading much smoother and quicker, whereas the M2 Max sometimes would stutter a bit. But in theory, I still was getting about the same playback frame-wise for both machines. And with this test, it also kind of led into my next test, which is one thing that I have always felt on every computer I've owned with DaVinci Resolve ever since the feature was announced. Voice isolation for DaVinci Resolve is an absolute game changer. It's borderline disgusting how good it is at just isolating someone's talking voice and blocking out 
all of the other garbage and nonsense that might be happening in the background. However, it is a juicy effect, and I've never had the greatest of experiences with playback. So generally speaking, it's something that I make sure works, turn it back off, and then turn it on at the very end when I'm getting ready to finish a project. And notoriously in my experience, if I go to the start of a project, when that effect is turned on, there is a noticeable bump or delay where the audio just is not in sync and is playing several frames behind what is actually being shown in the viewer. So I wanted to see if this new beast mode computer could do that, and unfortunately, it felt identical to me. So I was curious if yours was better, but it, it didn't seem to be better. No real difference there, still a bump, still a delay. I was a little surprised by this as well. So another draw on both the playback test and another draw on the voice isolation test. Then at this point, it was time for what I wanted to be the final test. Now this test truly shocked me. I shot a whole bunch of Blackmagic RAW 12 to 1 compressed footage, which again has always been a codec that gives pretty much every machine I throw it on some grief. It was in 4K as well, and sure, it runs great in DaVinci Resolve. I've never really had a problem, but as far as just light speed playback, I've never had great experiences with this. So I figured it would be good to use it for a render test. And to my absolute shock, both computers pretty steadily rendered at 30 frames per second. They're neck and neck. They're neck and neck, 30 frames. The project was long enough that we could watch it for several minutes and both of them pretty much hovered right at 30 frames per second. I was like genuinely shocked. We did it a couple times, couldn't believe it. So at the end of the night, after all of our tests, the fact of the matter was, well, if you have an M2 Max, you ain't missing out on much. There are certainly a few niche edge cases like Magic Mask where you will see a pretty significant difference if you have something like a 4090 at your disposal. But as far as I can tell with the way that Apple Silicon has been optimized and the way that DaVinci Resolve has been optimized, these new Apple Silicon laptops are absolutely disgusting. I went into tonight thinking, you know what? I'm gonna come out of here going, man, I'm going to want to build a computer. And honestly, I left his house thinking, I actually don't. <laughs> the other thing that I want to mention, the elephant in the room, the massive couple of elephants in the room. My computer fits in my backpack and it also runs off of battery for hours, even with video editing. And on top of that, it has the best screen that I have personally ever owned attached to it. So now I can say having run these tests and knowing full well that I love owning an Apple laptop, I don't have any desire as a professional video editor to build my own PC. And that kind of shocked me.